Hi, I'm Rebecca Balcarso. Let's take a look at The Lady of Shalott, Part 2, by Alfred Lord Tennyson. There she weaves by night and day a magic web with colors gay. She has heard a whisper say a curse is on her if she stay to look down to Camelot. All right, let's stop and see what's going on here. There she weaves by night and day. So she is weaving. She has a loom with strings and then she is um, going up under over with her colors with her yarn her threads and the colors are gay meaning they're lively they're bright colors probably and she does this both at night and in the daytime and what is she weaving a magic web web is interesting because Really what she's weaving is a uh, weaving, but the poet doesn't want to use the word weaving over and over, so he says web. But another reason he might be saying web is that web is something we can get tangled in, as in a spider's web, something we can get trapped in, and the Lady of Shalott is trapped in her tower, in her castle. So that is part of why he's using the word web. But you should think of it literally as a, just a weaving, a tapestry, a picture with yarn that she's making at the loom with her weaving. Okay, so she's her magic web with colors gay, but she has heard a whisper say a curse is on her. So something bad it could happen to her if she stay, that is if she pauses, if she stops weaving, to look down to Camelot. Camelot is the mythical city of King Arthur and his Knights of the Round Table. So she's not supposed to stop and look out the window and see Camelot. She's supposed to keep weaving and not stop. I guess she stops to eat and sleep, but you know, the poet doesn't go into that. But, but uh, her main activity is the weaving. Let's go on. She knows not what the curse may be, and so she weaveth steadily. And little other care hath she, the Lady of Shalott. All right. She doesn't know what the curse is. We don't know who put the curse on her. This is just part of the situation she's in. So she just weaves steadily, continuously, and she doesn't have any other problems or worries. That's what the word care means. Little other care hath she, very few other worries does she have, the Lady of Shalott. Thank goodness, because her one worry is a fairly big one. Stanza two. In, and moving through a mirror clear that hangs before her all the year, shadows of the world appear. There she sees the highway near, winding down to Camelot. She has a mirror, okay, moving through a mirror that hangs before her all the year. Well, she's got a mirror right in front of her because as she weaves her colors here, she's seeing the back side of her weaving. And in order to see what it looks like on the right side or the front side, she needs a mirror. Now the mirror shows her her weaving, but it also shows her what's out the window there on the road behind her through the window that if she could look at, she would see all this stuff but she can't look at it directly. She can only look at it through the mirror. So it says, moving through the mirror that hangs before her, shadows of the world appear. Now he doesn't mean sh only shadows. He means reflections, uh, my opinion is anyway, that Tennyson means that she can only see reflections of what's going on out the window because she's seeing the mirror image of it and not the actual, she doesn't turn around and actually see it. So shadows of the world appear, and one of the things she sees, it says, is a highway. It's not a freeway like highway with cars. It's just a well-traveled road that goes down to Camelot. Okay. There the river eddy whirls, and there the surly village churls, and the red cloaks of market girls pass onward from Shalott. So these are more things she sees in the mirror. The river eddy, that means the river washing up against the bank. And the surly village peasants, 
churls or peasants, just common folk, uh, surly, kind of uh, rough and tough, maybe. And then also red cloaks of market girls. These are girls going to the market to sell things or going to buy things from the market to bring back to their homes. And here we see red cloaks, that is red capes that the girls are wearing. Red is a color of life, blood, energy. And this is interesting because uh, it appears later in the poem too. And maybe this is what the Lady of Shalat is missing. It also could be associated with sexuality, sensuality, and this is also missing from her life. Sometimes a troop of damsels glad, an abbot on an ambling pad, sometimes a curly shepherd lad, or a long-haired page in crimson clad goes by to towered Camelot. So these are more people that go by on that road that she sees in the mirror. A troop of damsels, it would be uh, girls, unmarried women. An abbot is a church person, kind of like a friar. He goes by on a ambling horse, but not a steed, not a mighty thoroughbred horse, but just a probably common cart horse type of horse. And sometimes she sees a shepherd, a lad means a boy, with curly hair, and then a long-haired page. A page is the lowest servant in a castle, so the page has to do a lot of menial tasks. It's below squire, it's below maid. A page here has long hair, and he's clad, that is he's wearing his clothing, is crimson, red, so more red. The girls had the cloaks that are red, and now the page has this crimson clothing that he's wearing. So again, a color of vitality. Now, they all go by towered Camelot. Oh, and now we know that Camelot has towers. This was typical for medieval towns because they were used for defense. You could, you know, shoot arrows from the top of the tower and get your enemy. So there's always lots of towers in medieval towns. All right, and the rest of this stanza. And sometimes through the mirror blue, the knights come riding two by two. She hath no loyal knight and true, the Lady of Shalott. Hmm, all right. So the mirror is now called blue. We have another color. Blue is associated with calmness, reflection, sometimes emotions, water, the ocean. Here it's probably meant to just imply that it's calm, possibly sad, hmm. but in the mirror she sees knights riding two by two. So they come in pairs, they're riding their horses. She hath no loyal knight. That means she doesn't have a knight who does great deeds in her honor or who keeps little tokens of her, uh, like a handkerchief that, you know, nope, she doesn't have a knight who's loyal to her and true to her. She just doesn't have that. The Lady of Shalott. Now, is that a bad thing? Does every lady need a knight? Is this something she needs to have? Well, the speaker of the poem seems to feel that it's a sad thing that she doesn't have a knight. So, okay, we'll think about that. And the last stanza of this section. Bill, but in her web, she still delights to weave the mirror's magic sights for often through the silent nights, a funeral with plumes and lights and music went to Camelot. Okay, so it says in her web, in, in this weaving she's making, she does have some happiness. She still delights. And what's she weaving? Now we find out. She weaves the mirror's magic sights. So to her, everything she sees in the mirror is magical. Regular life seems magical to her. And this is what she's weaving on her weaving. Her web shows the people and things that she's seeing in the mirror. And then it says, through the silent nights, often there's a funeral that goes by. So a procession of people with plumes like feathers in their helmets and lights, probably torches, candles, and music. People playing instruments, especially little lutes and guitars and things like this went to Camelot. 
or when the moon was overhead, came two lovers. I'm sorry, when the moon was overhead, came two young lovers lately wed. I am half sick of sh shadows, said the Lady of Shalott. So this is the last bit of the second part. When the moon was overhead, here come lovers. So the moon is, of course, a romantic symbol. Lovers that are lately wed means that they just recently got married. So the two lovers come, they're married, and this prompts the Lady of Shalott to say something. This is the first time she has spoken, and what does she say? She says, I am half sick of shadows. I'm half sick of these reflections that I'm seeing in the mirror. It implies that she is dissatisfied with reflections and she would like to see real life for herself out the window, not just reflected in the mirror. And what prompts her to say this? It's the sight of the young lovers. So this line plus the idea that she doesn't have a knight, plus the red that everybody else has compared to her blue, all points toward her wishing to partake of this life outside. And that part of that life would be love and nights or having a night of her own having a relationship, and your interpretation of all of this will um, be something you'll come to on your own, but you can also see some of my interpretations or my some of my own ideas and things I've read about this poem on another video. But it's starting to look like here in the lines that she is unhappy with what's, what her life is like right now, and she wants to change something. And we'll see what she decides to do in the next part, part three. Hope you'll join me for that.